check out check out bionicchaos.com there's a lot of tools hey, let me know what you think and you will be supporting the project that way so thank you in advance for your support we covered most of this stuff CG to music conversion. Hey, go check it out. Let me know what you think. You can also do auto volume and uh, auto duration to be quieter. So the the chart here on the left is auto scaling. See this uh, frequency spectrum is uh, changing. Uh, there's a trend wavelet and uh, the noise it's actually coming from another tool you can select your channel this is 16 uh, channels implanted so we can uh, guarantee we are confident that this is actual eg and not like with uh, external eg recordings where it could be 50 50 uh, a lot of noise a lot of artifacts Yeah, when the auto duration is on. Yeah, the duration of the sound will be changed accordingly to the duration of the signal. Yeah, this channel is a bit annoying. It, let me know what you think. Ah, the trending doesn't do anything because it's already around zero. No, it doesn't look like. Did it just crash on me? Did it just crash on me? Yeah, the denoising is actually in another tool. Should be a separate tool for that. I think, yeah, it's this one here. So this is uh, similar. It's mainly around the noise. It doesn't have the sound options. Hey, this is adding an option for the whole spectrum. Yeah, it should limit the a uh, window size to something smaller. Something smaller. And hey, this is uh, in the middle of the seizure. There is uh, no seizure at the end of the recording there. Go check out this tool. Let me know if there's any suggestions. Yeah, I don't know why this uh, tool is a bit heavy. Uh, we need to probably redo it. I can hear my server doing extra, extra work that is not needed on uh, loading for some reason. On loading the page, but not, uh, and yes, essentially, separation uh, value of zero is the same as the overlay all. So maybe we don't need that function. I don't know why that the uh, screen doesn't become uh, this is uh, a plotly JS. We can control it uh, um, using those uh, little things as well or the bar the scroll bar at the bottom yeah we could do more work on this one especially considering how heavy it is on the server from memory eg2 that's ieg2 yeah this was a flask it's messy right so we have data sitting on the server it's near vista data from ieg.org I think anyone can register and get the data and then we have uh what's the html for this yeah plot html it's not normally it will be called index html that's okay uh it's calling our javascript files doesn't it a plotly a javascript is what the uh, doing is it most of the work i don't know what's in right 
Yeah, a lot of it is in the back end. A lot of it is on the server side, and this is not ideal. Yeah, I think that that the file is way too large. Way too large. Uh, let's do GPT quickly with this IG uh, two data. Let's open it quickly. We will start the another one. The description. Let's read the description quickly. NeuroVista EEG data viewer review 16 channels, 8 from each hemisphere, of intracranial EEG, IEEG, sample of 400 Hz with epileptic seizures recorded using the NeuroVista implant. Use the player or manually scroll through the file using a slider. You can select the active channel and turn it off to hide the trace. Try different overlay options to change how traces are grouped. Off, default, grouped separately for left and right channels all overlaid on top of each other. The September value sets the amount of separation on the screen, and the window size can be changed from 0 to 60. With 10 seconds being of coming soon, epoch labeling, fuzzy logic, etc. To do, set slider max value programmatically. Amazing, yeah. How everything can be a biomarker for a depression. You have, that article has a, a one figure, and it's called figure one. It's good they gave it a number. It's uh, HTML using plotly latest. A uh, JavaScript, that's fine. So what are we calling from here? Yeah, we don't care about that. Script.js. Yeah, eg, eg.js. And this one is running as a Flask application. So we run it the uh, locally quickly as well. Yeah, it takes forever to load. Why does it take forever to load? It must be that uh, very long uh, file can actually uh, limit the data size. Uh, we need to take the data and only um, have a sub uh, a subsection of that uh, data or make, or make the whole thing faster. The data is quite large, is it? Shouldn't be too bad. Right, the text file is 2 gigabyte. But surely is it's not uh, just uh, loading. Surely it's not just loading in into the Flask application, is it? We need a thin static or something. Yeah, we need to change the whole structure. Uh, we have the backend. Have the HTML with some description. And we have the JavaScript. Uh, let's not prompt it too much. Just give it a code. The code snippet you provided sets up a Flask application to visualize EEG data using Plotly. It reads data from a file, processes it based on a specified time range, and plots it on a web interface. Here are some improvements and notes on our implementation. Code optimization and cleanup. Data frame column assignment. When renaming your columns, you can simplify the process by including time in your channel underscore names list directly. This makes the column assignment clear. NumPy to list conversion. Instead of iterating through each trace in the figures dictionary to convert NumPy arrays to lists, you can use a more concise approach using list comprehension as a helper function. Error handling in Flask routes. You've handled exceptions well, but instead of logging the stack trace only in debug mode or writing it to a log file to keep the console output clear for production. Use of global variables in JavaScript. Your JavaScript code uses global variables and functions directly. Consider encapsulating them in a module or a class to avoid potential conflicts and enhance maintainability. Repeated code in JavaScript. The function update separation contains repeated code for different cases. Root, overlay, or... Let's use uh, GitHub Copilot as well. Uh, with the uh, workspace handle. Yeah, it's generating the whole... The whole thing. Including to do. Okay, we don't want to change this. We want to start fresh. Uh, can you generate all the prompts required to regenerate uh, this uh, web application code. Create a Python Flask web application that serves an HTML page to visualize EEG data. The application should read EEG data from a local file, process it to display specific intervals, and then use Plotly to generate an interactive plot. The data file is a whitespace delimited text file containing multiple EEG channels. The application should also have routes to serve the plot data dynamically as JSON for updates without page refresh. Write a Python function using pandas to load and process EEG data from a file. 
The function should read a specified number of rows starting from a given row offset, corresponding to a time slice in the EEG data. The data consists of 16 channels plus a time column. Assign column names to the data frame, calculate time in seconds for the x-axis, and prepare the data for plotting. Develop a Python function to create a plotly line plot from a pandas data frame containing EEG data. The function should plot all EEG channels against time, format the axes and labels, and make the plot interactive with a range slider for exploring data across time. The plot should be converted to dictionary format to be easily served as design an HTML template for displaying EEG data using Plotly in a Flask web application. Include elements for the plot, navigation, and interactive controls like sliders or buttons to adjust the display settings. In a flask application, that's the description. Let's pop those as prompts. What's the way? Yeah, we'll start prompting from there. Not where this uh, responses are coming from. Right there, simple. It's not generating the whole. Yeah, that's better. It's still doing that. Uh, like it. So the data, yeah, the data we served. It's JSON. It's static deployment. Yeah, it's continuing with the. The problem is that the data file is. The uh, uh, problem is that the data file is two gigabyte text file. Yeah, want to load it into cache, but that's too much for uh, for caching, isn't it? Yeah, that's that. Handling a two gigabyte text file containing EEG data efficiently in a web application context requires careful consideration of both performance and scale. Let's evaluate each of your proposed methods to determine the most suitable approach. 1. Loading data into memory. Pros. Fastest read access once data is loaded. Immediate responsiveness for data processing and visualization. Cons. Not scalable for larger files or multiple concurrent users, and it could exhaust the service memory. Not persistent. Data would need to be reloaded on each application restart or deployment. Verdict. Loading the entire file into memory is generally not advisable due to scalability and efficiency concerns, especially under the constraint of potentially multiple users or large data sizes. 2. Loading data into a database. Pro efficient handling of large datasets through optimized queries and indexing. Scalability to handle larger data sizes and more concurrent users. Data persistence and the possibility of transactional data management. Cons. Requires setting up and maintaining a database system. Overhead of integrating the database with your application. Verdict. Loading the data into a database is a robust solution for large datasets. It allows efficient querying and can significantly reduce memory usage on your web server. This is typically the preferred approach for handling large, structured datasets like EEG data. 3. Loading data into a cache. Pros. Fast access for frequently accessed data. Reduces load times after the initial cache build. Cons. Similar to in-memory storage, it may not be feasible for very large datasets without sufficient memory. Requires a strategy for cache invalidation and rebuilding. Verdict. Caching is useful for frequently accessed portions of the data, but is not suitable as the sole method for managing a 2 gigabyte dataset. It's often used in conjunction with database storage, caching results of common queries to improve performance. Loading data into a file system. Pros. Simple to implement. No need for additional systems. Data is persistently stored and managed by the OS. Cons. Direct file access is slower, especially for large files and complex queries. Requires manual handling of file reads, potentially leading to inefficient data processing. Verdict. Keeping the data in the file system and reading chunks of data as needed, e.g., using memory mapped files are efficient on the fly passing, can be viable for small applications or when database setup is infeasible. However, it's generally less efficient than database solutions. Recommended approach. For a 2 gigabytes EEG data file, using a database is recommended. Here's why. Efficiency. Databases are designed to handle large amounts of data efficiently. Functionality. Advanced querying, indexing, and data management features. Scalability. Easier to scale with increasing data size and user load. Integration. Many tools and libraries are available for integrating databases with web apps. Consider using a relational database like PostgreSQL or a time series database like InfluxDB, which can be particularly effective for timestamp data like EEG recordings. By importing the data into the database, you can leverage SQL queries or specialized time series queries to fetch only the required slices of data dynamically, based on user interaction with your application. This approach significantly reduces memory overhead and improves the responsiveness and scalability of your application. Where's the text file for the EEG data? Should be stored in a separate data folder or in the static folder? This is actually for Copilot. Oh yeah, that's what I'm doing at the moment, but it's super slow. 
uh, this is what I'm doing at the moment, but the web application is very slow to start. So I'm doing this one here. Yeah, it's starting forever. I have it running locally as well. This also takes some time for it to load. Yeah, I have that weird thing happening in the beginning. Yeah, we need to rewrite the whole thing. Yeah, we're loading a 2 gigabyte of file into memory every time the Flask application starts. So that can be slow. Suggesting to load the data into a database. Yes, what else we've got? The database. Yeah, different SQL types. Caching. If the data doesn't change often, no, it doesn't change often. Loaded in the cache like uh, Redis, yeah, I don't know. Junk reading if you need to keep the data, if you need to keep the data in a file, consider reading chunks, you can use pandas. Yeah, that's what I thought we were doing, but still takes some time to read portions of the file at a time. This way you only load into memory the data you need for each uh, request. So it's still doing back and forth uh, with the server. If the data is not used frequently, keeping it on file system and reading it only when necessary could be a viable option. This will be slower than the other options, but would keep the application's memory usage low. Can you update all the prompts? Yep. Yeah, just updating the prompts. We're not generating code uh, using uh, a GPT. Okay, we have the prompts. The data file is actually called something else. Should be simple. Yeah, we're using only this one file. Where are the, I don't know where the labels are uh, for this uh, data set. I don't think they are in the text file. There should be a separate the uh, uh, labels file to look it up the html I generate the html code for this application putting it in the copilot yeah this is <laughs> generic generic stuff it's not a generate a description for the whole web application. Yep. You need it in info there. I'm still trying to figure out how Copilot is working um, in terms of like how it's being implemented. Here's a comprehensive description for the entire web application designed to visualize EEG data, suitable for your project documentation or as an overview for development purposes. Web application for EEG data visualization. Objective. The application aims to provide a robust platform for visualizing electroencephalogram EEG data, facilitating the exploration and analysis of neural signals. This tool is designed to assist researchers, clinicians, and educators in examining complex EEG datasets efficiently. Features. One, dynamic data loading. The application does not load the entire data set into memory, preventing system overload and ensuring scalability. Instead, it accesses data on demand from a database optimized for large data sets. Two, database integration. EEG data is stored in a structured format within a relational or time series database, which enables efficient querying, indexing, and retrieval. This approach accommodates rapid access to segments of data based on user-defined parameters. Users can zoom, pan, and select specific time windows to closely inspect the data. For caching for performance, frequently accessed data segments are cached using Redis, enhancing retrieval speed and reducing database load for common queries. A user-friendly web interface allows users to select EEG channels, adjust visualization parameters, and manipulate the view of the data. It includes controls such as sliders for time range selection and options for overlaying multiple channels. It serves as a blueprint for, for development and a guide for potential users to understand the capabilities and benefits of the tool. So the OpenAI one is uh, just generating prompts essentially for GitHub Copilot. That was the idea. 
I thought we're not going for database, I thought we're going for local storage, which can be a database, but don't quite understand. Yeah, we have like two gig data file to store it somewhere. We should have everything in these 260 lines. The description. Yes, yeah, so that's what we have in the other app. There's all sorts of problems with it, mainly that it's slow. Still need the overlay option and a scroller. I like that scroller. I'm thinking making the file shorter. Uh, just the uh, hundred seconds of uh, data uh, would that help? The eventual result should be something like the image uh, attached. Are you going to be generating prompts for GitHub Copilot to actually do the coding, or would you stop being lazy and generate the code? as well. Given the simpler structure, you're aiming for under request to handle a reduced data set, 100 seconds of data. Your file and folder setup looks good for streamlined flask application. Here's how you can effectively manage this project. Yeah, it's some other um, a way of loading the, the data in. This is loading pretty quickly. It's running in the browser and everything. It's loading in no time. I like that. Plotly Express. So what we have is the same, but uh, JavaScript. So where's the bottleneck? Where is the bottleneck? Yeah, I like this one. It's like a single unit spy, but this this won't be. It. So where is all this stuff is being loaded? Obviously, when I use Python alone, it's all uh, loaded on my local machine. Yeah, okay. This does take some time. Yeah, that's very unresponsive as well. So we can have a down sample. We can try that. Unresponsive page. And how much is being loaded in, in the original? So it's 10,000 data points. Uh, what are we loading for the actual application? Number of points to load to 40,000 40,000 that's why it's so slow and um, no it's much quicker uh, ba, 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 ba. Could be another seizure in that file we need to find the label for it so where the labels are we want to primarily rely on JavaScript so the server is not overloaded to save uh, electricity. So essentially, we want the backend to do as little as absolutely possible. Uh, can we generate all the necessary code starting with uh, JavaScript and then uh, Python code? Align with your goal of minimizing server load and maximizing client-side processing with JavaScript, let's focus on setting up a Flask application that serves the initial data and handles minimal operations on the server. The JavaScript will take care of dynamic data loading, manipulation, and visualization. Here's how you can structure the server-side Python code and client-side JavaScript code. The error message, length mismatch. Expected axis has one element. New values have 17 elements. Typically occurs in pandas when you try to assign a list or an array of column names that doesn't match the number of columns in the data frame. This often happens during the renaming of data frame columns. This error could arise due to a misunderstanding about the data structure when reading the file or incorrect column assignment after reading the data. Debugging the column assignment. In your Flask application, when you read the EEG data file and try to assign column names, ensure that the number of columns you're assigning matches the number of columns actually present in the data frame. If your data frame originally contains only one column, which seems to be the case from the error message, but you attempt to assign 17 column names, you'll get this error. Here's how to properly handle the data frame column naming. Check the file's format. Verify the format of the i004 underscore a002 underscore d001 underscore day7.txt file to understand how many columns it actually has. If it's supposed to have 17 columns, ensure that it's being read correctly. 
Adjust the read method. If the file is tabulated or has a specific delimiter that pandas isn't automatically recognizing, you need to specify this delimiter when reading the file. If the data is indeed space or white space delimited, you might have to confirm there are no issues with the format. Properly assign column names. Ensure you have the correct number of columns before assigning names. Modified code example. Here's a modified version of your server-side data fetching route, with additional debugging and error handling. To adapt the Python and Flask code that serves EEG data using pandas read underscore CSV function with chunking, and integrate it with the public, express for visualization, we can follow the pattern you've used in your standalone script. Below is a suggestion on how to implement this in your Flask web application, taking into account the proper usage of September equals S plus as a replacement for the lim underscore whitespace equals true. Data file and reading. The file is read using the specified skip underscore rows and num underscore points to extract only the relevant portion of EEG data. This minimizes memory usage and load time. Data columns. Assuming the file contains time followed by 16 EEG channels. Adjust the range in the list comprehension if the number of channels differs. Error handling. Basic error handling is included to catch and return errors during data reading or processing. This JavaScript will handle fetching the data from the Flask server and using plotly to plot it on the client. So the error you're encountering is caused by a mismatch between the number of columns in the data and the names assigned to them in your Python script. Specifically, it seems that you're attempting to assign 17 column names, one for time and 16 for channels, to a data frame that has only 16 columns. This is a common issue when the data frame does not include a separate time column as you might have expected. Okay, go check out binicamps.com. There's a lot of tools. Uh, let me know what you think. And you will be supporting the project that way. So thank you in advance for your support.